They say money doesn't grow on trees, but if you're a Moroccan goat herder, then it just might. These are Moroccan tree goats, but why are they standing so eerily still, almost as if they're posing, and why are they in a tree? If you're thinking they climbed up on their own, then you wouldn't be entirely wrong, as the goats have been observed climbing argan trees to get to the fruit on the upper branches. Many internet sources attribute this odd phenomenon to evolution. It's a Darwinian talent. Goats developed to reach argan fruit. The nut contains the valuable argan oil. And I wish it were that simple, but unfortunately for the goats, their proclivity for eating argan fruit has landed them in the midst of a full-blown conspiracy, as some goat herders are now exploiting this bizarre behavior in order to make a quick buck from naive tourists. Let me introduce you to Morocco's hottest new tourist industry tree goats. The practice of treeing goats in order to attract tips from tourists goes all the way back to the early 2000s, and despite a brief hiatus in 2020 due to the coronavirus pandemic, this business is now back in full swing after lockdown restrictions ended earlier this year. This practice involves buying a herd of goats and coaxing them up the branches of an argan tree with argan fruit and grain and prodding them into place with a stick. Baby goats are often tied to the trunk of trees to make it easy for tourists to pick them up and take photos with them. Some goat herders employ different tactics, such as carrying the animals up the trees manually, placing them on a branch, and picking them up and putting them back on the branch again each time they attempt to jump off, until, eventually, they learn that there's no point in trying. The goat treeers, often ex-farmers trying to earn a living after their crops fail due to increasingly severe drought conditions, laud the tree climbing as natural goat behavior, but this is only true to an extent. While these goats do have a penchant for the pulpy fruit of the argan tree and have been observed clambering up to higher branches in order to reach them, they, well, well look at them. This doesn't even look real. These goats appear anything but natural. There is even a Snopes article written about this phenomenon, as apparently many that have seen pictures or video of these tree goats believe them to be a work of Photoshop but they are real pictures. And natural or not, they certainly spark one's curiosity. Listen to what one tourist had to say of the phenomenon after witnessing it during his visit to Western Morocco. The practice of treeing goats has become so ubiquitous in some regions of Morocco that up to nine separate herds of tree goats can be found along this roughly 100 mile road from Marrakesh to Essaouira, two of Morocco's more popular tourist destinations. Given the near impossible farming conditions and the ostensible ease of training a herd of goats to stand in a tree for a few hours a day, it reportedly only takes up to six months, many ex-farmers now make their entire living from generous tips from tourists who stop to marvel at the sideshow attraction. One ex-farmer turned goat herder reported bringing home as much as $20 in tips on a good day before the pandemic. However, business has slowed since the country's reopening. But while some sympathize with the plight of the farmers, others have raised concerns about the welfare of the goats subjected to this practice. This is what one animal welfare advocate had to say on the issue. What's more, the goats will sometimes fall out of the trees and get hurt. One veterinarian in Essaouira, a coastal city in western Morocco, recalls one instance when a tourist brought a goat that had fallen and needed treatment for a broken leg and other instances of goats falling out of trees have been recorded elsewhere as well. Here's what one journalist from National Geographic had to say after spending a day observing one of these tree goat herds in action. When it's time for the goats to go home, eleven get down easily. The herder climbs up to coax the straggler, a female, while his older brother tosses small stones at her, then uses a stick to agitate the branch she's standing on. The goat teeters and crashes to the ground, a fall of about 12 feet. After a few attempts, she struggles to her feet, and as the others walk to their pen, she trails behind, limping. Although many animal rights advocates proclaim this practice to be a form of animal abuse, Morocco's government seems to have taken a more neutral stance on the issue, with the head of the country's animal health division saying that she isn't aware that goats in the Essaouira region are being put in trees to earn tourism dollars. She went on to say that climbing is a natural behavior of the animals and is good for the organs because Quote, if goats eat the fruit and disperse the seeds in their feces, that increases the number of trees. 
An ecologist with the Desertification Research Center, when asked to weigh in on the issue, agreed that seed dispersal is a good thing, but disagreed that the practice is good for the overall welfare of the trees themselves. He noted that the goats eat more than just the fruit of the trees, but the leaves and the seedlings too, the latter of which take anywhere from 7 to 15 years to reach fruit bearing age. In a situation like this, it can be hard to place your sympathy in the right place. On the one hand, this practice is obviously exploitative and arguably cruel to the goats involved and is even damaging the trees themselves. On the other, many of these former farmers are left with very few alternatives to support their families since drought conditions have made farming all but obsolete. One goat herder, an ex-farmer, said that he had no interest in using his goats as roadside attractions until it became too dry to grow wheat. He says, quote, I'm doing a job. The goats are doing a job. The money we make is used to buy food for all of us, my family and the goats. So what do you think? Is this an acceptable practice or should it be banned? And if it is banned, what are the farmers going to do? Should the government get involved or should we just let the practice continue? Let me know what you think in the comments, and as always, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed the video.